Gentlemen, please stand if you're able. Gentlemen, remove your cap for the playing of the Star Spangled Banner by the Halifax Area High School Marching Band.
This is the Wellspan Sports Medicine Friday Night Rivals. Week six brings us to Peters Mountain. A lot going on. Homecoming, the fourth annual pregame carnival at Halifax High School for our Mid Pen Liberty Division spotlight game on the banks of the Susquehanna River. The defending champs in the Liberty Conference, the three and two Upper Dolphin Trojans, facing the three and two Halifax Wildcats. It's the Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals. Hi, everybody. Great to see you tonight. I'm Phil Shaner. This is Keon Claiborne. Tonight, we'll see the wing tee of Upper Dolphin, led by their junior quarterback, who is a year under his belt in Aiden Bingaman. They expect a lot out of him. Yeah, kid has a strong arm, Phil. He's already thrown for 350 yards, seven touchdowns. He has a high IQ. I'm looking to be on display here tonight. For Halifax, Isaac Miller, he's going to do it on the offensive side, but boy, he's really good on defense. He has 43 tackles, second in the league in tackles for a loss. And on his offensive side of things, he's already ran for 310 yards, has eight touchdowns, gets north and south when he runs, and on defense, he's always around the football. Well, Span Sports Medicine's keys to the game. We start with Upper Dolphin. Yeah, they got to control the line of scrimmage up front and stop the run here tonight. Halifax, what are their keys? They got to force turnovers and win on special teams here to get a win. Rivalry game in every way, about 13 miles apart between these two schools. Upper Dolphin leads the series 10 to 8 since 2004. The Trojans have won three straight in the series. Year-long bragging rights are on the line between Upper Dolphin and Halifax. The Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals is on my TV, Central PA. The kickoff is coming up next. Our national anthem tonight was sponsored by Pennsylvania Army National Guard. It is week number six, and we are in the Mid-Pen Liberty Division. Two teams that are three and two, Halifax and Upper Dolphin. Should be a good one here tonight, getting ready for our Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Pennsylvania opening kickoff. Upper Dolphin, they are 2-0 and oh in the Liberty. Halifax, they are 0-1 oh in Liberty play. Upper Dolphin with wins over Shenandoah Valley, Susquehanna, and Newport coming on, coming in on a two-game win streak. Halifax, they were on a three-game win streak to their loss last week to Juniana. We are underway, week number six of Friday Night Rivals with our Highmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Pennsylvania kickoff. Upper Dolphin, they won the toss, and they decided to receive the football. And they'll start at the 38-yard line with this offense led by Aiden Bingham, Bingaman. And let's take a look at the starters brought to you by West Shore Home. This is an offense that averages 295 yards a game, 179 yards on the ground, 115 yards in the air. Caleb Schneider is their top running back. They have some good receivers. They are deep at the receiver position. This is a wing T offense. 
The second year for Bingaman, who started last year as a sophomore. A season ago, he threw 15 touchdowns and 1,200 yards and completed 58% of, of his passes. Kurt Miller is our official tonight. There was a penalty marker down, so now Upper Dolphin will start in Wildcat territory at the 48-yard line. Upper Dolphin feeling good after a loss to Williams Valley to open the season and then a loss to Camp Hill and then back-to-back -back wins over Susquehanna and Newport. Hand off straight ahead, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. We'll meet the Halifax defense. This is a defense that has really caused a lot of turnovers in the season. Four interceptions, eight fumble recoveries by this defense. Klinger's been great on the defensive line, and Isaac Miller has really been the story. 43 tackles at his linebacker position. There is your West Shore home starting defense for the Wildcats. And there is Klinger. Five tackles for a loss for the six foot one, 230 pound senior. Bingaman will keep it himself. Bingaman runs close to a first down, but he'll just be shy of the first down by about three yards. So the quarterback keeps it himself, but Keon, all those snaps he had last year as a sophomore have really paid off. He's much more than just the game manager this year. He can beat you with his legs. Yeah, that was a sweet move right there when the option kept it, and, you know, was able to pick up good yardage right there. Let's see what he does here on third down. Third and three coming up for Upper Dolphin. So they're working in Halifax territory. We are just underway here in this mid-pen Liberty Division spotlight on Friday Night Rivals. So a third and three for the Trojans. Bingaman out of the gun, and Halifax jumps. Coming across was Peter Rank, the senior, came across, and that'll give ben Upper Bolt. Dolphin a first down. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, results in a first down. Kurt Miller has our call, and Peter Rank was a little too anxious there, number 11, running across that line. So a first down for Upper Dolphin. There is their coach, Ken Smeltz, in his seventh season, 47-21. and 21. Line Mountain grad, played the offensive line at Mansfield, was a Bloomberg University assistant coach, also a defensive coordinator at Newport. Going down, deep down to the 10 yard line and you talk about the big pass, but he dropped the football, great throw, threw it on a dime, but unable to come up with the catch was Tyler Erdley, and Erdley has 20, 11 catches this season with four receiving touchdowns. That might have been touchdown number five. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be thinking about that one later. He had that one right in the pocket. And that was six, but just right there, you can see the big arm right there on this display. Erdley's been really good this year. So is Caleb Snyder, their leading running back. Snyder averages about 7.6 yards a carry. Erdley has 11 catches, 265 yards, and four touchdowns. He had a 78-yard touchdown pass last week. There's another penalty marker down, our third of the night. False start, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. This time it was an upper dolphin after two penalties to start the game on Halifax. So our third penalty goes against the Trojans. There is the Halifax new head coach in his first season, Roy Wall. Coached at 13, 11 seasons at Northern Lebanon. Also coached nine years as the head coach at Millersburg right down the road. Was the head coach at Bishop O'Reilly back out of when he came out of uh, Bloomsburg University. There's a run inside for about four yards. Schneider with the, with the run there. But Coach Wall comes in and is excited to take over this Halifax team that was just one in nine last year, and they've won several years where they've only won one game. So they've already won three, so that surpasses what they've done in the last couple of years. They lost to Hamburg to open the season, then they beat Midwest, and they beat Hancock out of Maryland and James Buchanan, and last week a loss to Juniana, 35-14. to 14. So three wins already for this Halifax team and Coach Wall in his first season. So a third down, third and about nine, Nine or ten yards for Aiden Bingaman. Bingaman going to pass. Fires down, has an open man, and out of the hands of Angle. Angle had it, couldn't bring it down. So two of Bingaman's passes dropped, one by Erdley, and this one dropped by Engel. And both of them were right just in the receiver's pockets. Look at another one, nice rollout. Kind of over them, not really, just right through the hands and, you know, fourth down. Engel with six catches, 76 yards, and he had a 57-yard touchdown last week. He had three grabs in the win 
over Newport, 30 to six. So now a fourth down for the Trojans. Working in Halifax territory, the ball sits at the 35 yard line. They're going for it with a fourth and nine. Bingaman fakes and fires, has a man downfield and incomplete. They just can't connect. A little bit of a miscommunication between the receivers and the quarterback here tonight. And the quarterback does take a hit on that incomplete pass. Now that look, on the pump, I thought he had his receiver. But ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh, you're going to be feeling that one later. Big fella put it on him right there. Paul made the hit, 75, the 5'10", 270-pound sophomore. And Halifax takes over on downs and let meets the Halifax offense brought to you by West Shore Home. Tegan Carroll is the quarterback, the sophomore, completing 54% of his passes. Isaac Miller, he's the leading rusher, and they are deep at the wide receiver position. Carroll will throw, has the completion to Bechtel. Bechtel makes the catch for a four-yard gain close to the 40-yard line. Let's meet the upper Dolphin defense. What they did is they moved Caleb Schneider, who really leads the defense from the linebacker position back to the defensive end. He started the season at linebacker, and moving him to DN, his natural spot, has been the difference for this team. There's the upper Dolphin defense brought to you by West Shore Home. They have 16 quarterback sacks this season, three interceptions and three fumbles for this upper Dolphin defense. Carroll rolling out to his right, fires and has the completion far side. And that grab made there by Renninger. Renninger's sixth catch of the season, but short of the first, still a third and five or six or so as Carroll is two for two passing early. And good coverage by both the defensive backs on both first and second down, you know, bringing the receivers down early. So a third down, third and five from the 30, uh, from the 41 yard line. So let's see what Carroll can do. Fakes the handoff, Carroll's gonna try to run it himself, looking for the first down. Carroll's still on his feet, but steps out of bounds, and he'll be short of the first down. So a fourth down coming up for the Wildcats. One thing about the Wildcats, they certainly did not have problems scoring points. They are leading the Liberty Conference in points scored. They are, have scored 169 points. They're averaging 33 points a game and only giving up 19. So as far as scoring, not been a problem this year for the Wildcats in their three and two start. They will punt the football back with a fourth and five. As Upper Dolphin will get it back on the punt. Good punt is taken at the 30-yard line and a gain of just two yards. Time now for our Scholar Athletes, brought to you by Schellenberger Janusian Wolf LLP for Upper Dolphin, Aiden Falk Road. Golf and archery, isn't that neat? He wants to major in pre-golf management, does very well in the classroom and plays two great sports, golf and archery. And for Halifax, Justin Zahurak, a basketball and baseball player. Does a great job in the classroom as a 4.0. Student athletes chosen for the Scholar Athlete are eligible to win a $3,000 scholarship presented at the end of the season, courtesy of Schellenberger, Januzzi, and Wolf LLP, who are proud to support and encourage outstanding student athletes across central Pennsylvania. The Trojans have the ball and a nice little play as Snyder gets it, and he has 15 yards and a first down, a kitchen saver first down. So that was a nice to play, getting Schneider his first carry of the night, and it's good for 15. And a beautiful, like, that. obviously the wind tears to create confusion all night, but a great job for Schneider just sitting there, kind of put, put some pressure on the defensive back there later then. Schneider had a great week last week, seven carries, a 40-yard touchdown, two receptions. Again, averaging close to eight yards a carry. Give straight ahead, another pickup of 15, so back-to-back -back runs. And that is the sophomore, Carter Drabellis. The sophomore's been the biggest surprise. Carter has not missed a workout all summer long, and coach said as far as he knew that what Snyder would give him, he's really surprised the way Carter has played so far this season. It's another huge pickup right there by Carter. He just kept his leg moving and changed the movement right here early. Belbus. 24 carries, 157 yards. He's averaging close to seven yards a carry. He has one rushing touchdown this season. 
Bingaman throws and over the head of the attended target. And that is Erdley out of the backfield. So they have missed twice. And they have not missed, missed this much this season. But here twice, Bingaman and Erdley aren't able to hook up. Erdley last week, three catches, 114 yards, and a 78-yard touchdown. So they had it going last week against Newport, trying to keep that connection here in this game. But so far, 0 for 2, trying to get the ball to him. Nice little play here on the reverse. Eaterly gets hit hard by Ooh. Klinger. There's big Klinger. Landon Ooh. Klinger came up and made the big hit. 6'1", 230-pound senior. Take a listen to this hit that Klinger put on. Wow. Picked up just a couple of yards and another third and long for Upper Dolphin. So the Trojan second opportunity on offense. They turn it over on downs. Their first opportunity. 6.15 to go first quarter, no score. This mid-pen Liberty showcase game here on Friday Night Rivals. Bingaman rolling, firing, has a man. The catch is made by Angle down to the 15-yard line, and that's a first down. Bingaman rolling out, making a strong throw. Yeah, and, and I honestly didn't know if he had any receivers downfield, but did a good job of just keeping his eyes on his target, picking up the first down. Angle, that's his seventh catch of the season. He had a 57-yard touchdown last week. They jumped out very quickly on Newport a week ago. They scored 22 points in that first quarter last week. So a first and 10, all up the Wildcats 16 yard line. So they're in the red zone. And to give to Snyder. Snyder inside, picks up five yards. And establishing the run, that's exactly what Coach Smeltz wants to do. Now last year, they graduated 16 players along with their top three rushers. More than 2,000 yards of rushing graduated a year ago. Brady Morgan had over 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns last year and had a big game in this game last year, a game won by Upper Dolphin over Halifax 56-13 a year ago. It was 42-0 at the half a season ago, and Morgan had eight carries, 151 yards, and three touchdowns. He averaged 19 yards a carry. Running to the right side and getting inside the 10. On that run, one thing about this wing tee, they can go plenty different directions. You have three people in that backfield who are working, and that's the sophomore Drabel, Drabelbis, again, who's had a couple of big runs uh, here already tonight. So he's a good changeup. You have Tyler and Caleb and then Carter, the three main running attack for Coach Schmelz, who had to replace all of his running backs from a year ago, graduated. Seven walks into the end zone. That is Caleb Snyder with his sixth rushing touchdown of the season. Four-yard touchdown run for Caleb Snyder, and he just walked in. Huge hole for Caleb. Barely touched, and um, like I said, he he was moving his legs early in the first play. You know, picked up about a 20-yard plus yard, so he was basically had the eyes on the end zone all the time. That's your Pennsylvania Air National Guard touchdown. Four-yard touchdown run for Caleb Snyder to put the Trojans up, 6-0. And Schneider's sixth rushing touchdown of the season. Upper Dolphin likes to go for two. And that's what they'll do after the Caleb Schneider four-yard touchdown run. 4.22 to go in the first. So they go for two. Give it back to Snyder, trying to get the two-point conversion, and he is stopped. But the Trojans are on the board. They score first. Caleb Snyder in from four yards out, and Upper Dolphin has a 6-0 lead over Halifax. You are watching the Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals.
Auburn Dolphins strikes first. Caleb Snyder, four-yard touchdown run. The two-point conversion was no good. It's 6-0. Time for another Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Pennsylvania kickoff. Bingham in one of five for 20 yards, passing early on. Snyder, four carries, 33 yards, and a touchdown. See what Halifax can do on the return. Making the move is Rank, and Rank is stopped at the 26-yard line, and that's where Halifax will have the ball after the kickoff. Time to raise the roof here on Friday Night Rivals. Abel, Sun, Roofing, and Siding raise the roof. And the cheering section for Halifax all decked out in their colors. And hey, there's the Wildcat himself cheering the Wildcats on. Raising the roof here on Friday Night Rivals. Brought to you by Abel, Sun, Roofing, and Siding. Fired up here homecoming, the fourth annual pregame carnival. They're excited that CBS 21 is here with the Friday Night Rivals cameras. Carroll rolling out to the right. Fires has a man wide open in the flat. And the completion there and a pickup of about six yards. So a second and short coming up as Bechtel make, made his 18th catch of the season. Yeah, good job by Bechtel just kind of sitting right in target, picking up you know, good yardage here in that first down. Bechtel, the sophomore, 5'9, 195 pounds. Last year, this team only had about 21 kids on their roster. They're up to 34 on the roster. They're dressing 31 tonight. Eight seniors, six juniors, 13 sophomores, and seven freshmen on the Halifax roster. They are a Class A school. And a first running play for Isaac Miller. The senior goes straight ahead and has enough for a first down. A kitchen saver first down on Isaac Miller's run. Miller just keeping those legs turned. That's a big boy. He's been playing, you know, obviously we set offense and defense. So good to see the offense move. Miller with 53 carries, 310 yards, averaging close to six yards a carry and eight touchdowns. Leads the mid pen Liberty in touchdowns scored this season. Also has six catches for 61 yards out of the backfield. And there's another penalty coming down. We've had a couple here in the, especially in the first opening right minutes. Snap. Full start. Full start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And that'll be a third penalty of the night, as Kurt Miller tells us in Halifax. There's a look at Coach Wall. 11 seasons at Northern Lebanon, 46 and 65. At Northern Lebanon, he won the Section 3 championship and took his team to the playoffs in 2014, 2015, and 2017. Also, was a head coach right up the road at Millersburg, so he's familiar with these teams. Familiar with Halifax and familiar with Upper Dolphin. Was there for nine years. Was also a head coach at Bishop O'Reilly in the Wilkes-Barre area. Went to Bloomsburg and then coached with Frank Shuck talk at Wilkes for a couple of years as well. Carroll throws down to the sideline and incomplete. A lot of energy on that Upper Dolphin sideline. Of course, they won the Liberty last year. They want to win it again, but so many players gone with graduation 16. And they know that they have the target on their back, but they believe they could win the Liberty. Upper Dolphin and Judiana and Lime Mountain all undefeated in Liberty play. And then Halifax is 0-1. Susquehanna is 0-2. And Newport is 0-2. But Susquehanna, Upper Dolphin, Lime Mountain, Judiana, those three, those four teams really have could have a shot at winning the Liberty this season. Second down, here comes Carroll firing incomplete. He was looking for Rank, who stopped on his on his pattern, and then he had a, another receiver ahead as they are deep at the wide receiver position, looking for Mason Enders, who has seven catches on 103 yards and a touchdown, number seven. So Carroll last year, he got sacked a lot. I mean a lot. <laughs> as a freshman, he had a lot of pressure on him. And how about the job that this Halifax offensive line has done? They've only given up two sacks all season, and that was last week in the Judiana game. Before that, in the previous games, Carroll was not sacked the entire season. That is an unbelievable stat for that offensive line for the Wildcats. Low snap here, and the throw out, and they're going to say that the ball was down. 
and his knee was down with the football, so that's where the market is. Kurt Miller, the official, sees it right here, and there is the knee down with the ball, and that's where the ball will be placed. So a fourth down coming up for the Wildcats. They're going to have to punt the football back to Upper Dolphin as the Trojans have a 6-0 lead. Again, these two schools are close. They've been playing for a long time, only about 13 miles between Upper Dolphin High School and Halifax High School. Upper Dolphin has won three straight in this series. They also won three straight in 2013 and 2015. And a penalty marker comes down as Upper Dolphin will have the ball in good field position like they've had their previous two offensive opportunities. The first one, they were four and out. The second opportunity ended with a Caleb Snyder touchdown run. His sixth rushing touchdown of the season. And that's where we sit, 6 nothing. Here on Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team. The 15 penalties. yards. Or 10 yards. Let's First take a look down. if we can see it here. The penalties on Upper Dolphin. There you see the block in the back. So that's good news for Halifax. Instead of getting the ball in Halifax territory, it's going to be moved back. Coming up next week, we'll be in the Mid-Pen Colonial. The GA Blue Devils at the Susquehanna Township. So we'll see Hannah, both Greencastle's 4-1, and one, and Hannah is 3-2. and two. Tonight, Susquehanna Township is at Waynesboro, they lost to Mechanicsburg by one, and they lost to Milton Hershey by one, or they could be undefeated. So we will see GA, Blue Devils, and Hannah next week at the Mid-Pen Colonial. Ball is almost intercepted. Bingaman's pass thrown down to the 45-yard line and almost picked. He was looking for angle. And take a look, another big hit by Klinger. Coming there, that's Paul. Big Paul coming there, making the hit. The 5'10", 270-pound sophomore from his defensive end spot. Paul with two big hits on the quarterback. Air Ford almost had an interception. He has an interception this year, does the senior. A pick six. He scored from 30 yards, number 18. And there's a look at Paul. He's caused a lot of trouble here tonight. Bingaman keeps it himself. And then the pitch. And... Running straight ahead, getting knocked out of bounds. Short of the first down. I thought he was going to keep it for himself, but the last second pitched it off to the running back. Third and short now. And he's missed on a couple, like I said, receiver targets that, you know, dropped him. But I think, honestly, they can keep looking in the air. They just connect. So third and three coming up. 34 is Nolan Diefenbach. And great job by the defense there to blow that up. That's Miller, his 44th tackle of the season for the senior. And how about Coach Wall? He's seen a lot of great linebackers in his time at Millersburg and down in Northern Lebanon. Coach Wall says that Isaac Miller is the best he's ever coached. Wow. Best That's he's ever pick. coached. So a fourth down coming up now, a fourth and one from the 49-yard line. Snyder straight ahead has the first, picked up three yards, and that will be a kitchen saver first down run for Caleb Snyder, who has the four-yard touchdown for the Trojans, keeps the drive alive. When in doubt, give it to the big fella, let him pick up that yard. Pick up that yard, Snipe just picking up those legs. So the drive continues with under a minute to go in a fast moving first quarter here at Peters Mountain. Halifax High School homecoming tonight. First and 10 for the Trojans. Bingaman will pass it. Fires and has the completion at the 39 yard line. And very close to a first down. That'll be a nine yard pickup. Ben. Kepler makes the catch, his fifth catch of the season. Kepler, the six foot, 155 pound senior. So a nine yard pickup, second and one coming up for the Trojans. 
With just 20 seconds to go in the first quarter, the Trojans up 6-0. The game here in the mid-pen Liberty. Upper Dolphin wants to go 3-0 and in conference play. Bingaman fires it up, has a man, but overthrows his attended target, Tyler Erdley. And this is the third, this is the third time that they're not able to hook up. And the reason is number 75, Paul. He is just having a meeting with Bingaman all night long so far. Three big hits on the quarterback, which rushes his throw. Sure has. Big Paul. Elijah Paul, the sophomore, 270. 5'10", having a game tonight. He's putting a hit on Bingaman. So now a third and one for the Trojans. Ball's on the 40-yard line in Wildcat territory. Three seconds to go before the end of the first quarter. Here comes the Trojans to get the playoff. And the handoff. And we are through one quarter. The Trojans have a 6-0 lead in Upper Dolphin is driving here on Friday Night Rivals. Second quarter underway, Halifax Athletic Field Stadium. 6-0, Upper Dolphin with the lead. Fourth and one coming up for the Trojans on the 40-yard line. And a run around the outside. Good run there by Nolan Diefenbach, who has the first down run and a whole lot more. But the ball was out. We'll have to see on the far side if Upper Dolphin was able to control it. He got to the 30-yard line. So a pickup of 10 yards on the run by Diefenbach, and he lost the football. A turnover, and that's what the Halifax defense does. That is their ninth fumble recover, recovery of the season. Wow. Coach Wall talked about that is the key. His team leads the league in points scored, and, of course, points that they only give up. Only given up 19, which is the lowest amount, and then they lead in takeaways. And that is hard to believe that they have nine fumble recoveries here in five games in a quarter. That was a big turnover. So Halifax takes over after the fumble by Diefenbach. Halifax has the ball first and 10 from their own 30. Carroll's been pretty good early on. Let's see what he does as Upper Dolphin shows they're going to bring some pressure, and they do. Try to set up the screen and incomplete. He was looking for Mason Enders. So second down now for Halifax on this homecoming night. Good crowd on hand. Like I said, only 13 miles between these two schools. So Upper Dolphin has a packed house and a lot of folks here from Halifax with the fourth annual carnival before the game and then homecoming coming up at half. Real nice crowd. Everybody's here in the valleys here tonight. These two schools right next to each other, neighboring schools with Millersburg in between. Second down for the Wildcats. For the sophomore, Tegan Carroll. 
Isaac Miller straight ahead. He picks up 11 yards, and that is a bath fitter first down run. Isaac Miller, a first down carry. And he's had a recipe for success here in the early in the first half. I'd honestly kind of keep the ball with him and let him continue to pick up yards in the run game, and then let him open up the passing game. But Miller's moving those legs. Miller's been effective this year. Eight rushing touchdowns. That's the most, as I said before, in the mid pen. Liberty Division. Carroll working out of the gun. A little bit of a spread set in this zone option, uh, zone offense that they Coach Wall has brought. Incomplete pass. I'll tell you one thing. They're not afraid to go downfield. That was an incomplete pass to Mason Enders. But talking to Coach Wall, he said, we are not a dink and dunk type of passing game. When we throw the ball, we mean it. Yeah. So they like to go downfield, and they've had a lot of success. Like I said, with all the points they have scored, averaging 33 points a game this season. Carroll's three of six, passing the football. Miller with two carries for 14 yards for their leading rusher. So a second and 10 from the 41 for the Wildcats. Miller gets it. Penalty marker is down. Miller still on his feet until he gets knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Pickup of seven yards on the carry, but we'll have to wait for Kurt Miller and see what the flag is all about. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Holding penalty on Halifax. That's their fourth penalty of the game. So they get a big fella, just clear hold on that defensive end. Diefenbach was the one that made the stop to knock him out of bounds, but the hold will move them back. So now a second and 20. The ball at the 31-yard line. Halifax opened the season with a loss to Hamburg and then three straight wins in a row until last week their three-game winning streak was snapped by Judiana, 35 to 14, the first game that they played in the Liberty. And that ball is dropped. Trying to get it to Isaac Miller out of the backfield. Miller only has six catches for 61 yards. So they don't do that often. And he was unable to hold on to it. And he dropped the pass. And we have another penalty marker down. Uh, it looked like it. It might have been down. Personal foul. Shot block on the offense. 15 yards. Second down. Take a look at the left guard with the chop block. Oh, no. Center. Center left guard were the two that had the chop block. Penalty number five on the night for Halifax. So because of the penalty, they're going the opposite direction after getting their ninth fumble recovery of the season. You thought that would spark some momentum for their offense, but two costly penalties has them third and a mile. Or second and a mile. It's second and 35. You don't want to have too many self-inflicting penalties, especially after big plays like that on defense. Yeah, two big penalties here in this drive after the turnover. So now you think the Trojans are going to send some pressure. Carroll rolls out. Fires and has the completion to the 34-yard line. Good catch by Peter Rank. That's Rank's 14th catch of the season. Peter Rank put on a show here when we were here two years ago when he was a sophomore. He had an incredible night the last time the Friday Night Rivals cameras were here. Good catch by Rank there, his 14th grab of the season. A great effort right there from Rank and kind of picked up a big chunk of the yard is back. Not much, still third and long here, but let's see what they pull out. They need to get the ball to the upper Dolphin 49-yard line to get the first. So still third and long for Carroll. Out of the backfield, they get it to Miller. Miller gets a couple of yards, but a fourth down coming up. Miller was trying to break free, but was unable to. Caleb Schneider made the stop. Snyder over 50 tackles. He has 10 tackles for a loss, two sacks. And the key was they started the season with Caleb Snyder at the linebacker position. Then 
they moved him back to his normal position on the defensive end, and Coach said that has made the difference the last two weeks for the upper Dolphin defense with having Schneider back at the defensive end spot instead of linebacker. Get already had, like you mentioned earlier, over 50 tackles early this season, and you know he's clearly making plays defensively. So Halifax will punt the ball to upper Dolphin. The ball is up to the 35-yard line, and that's where the Trojans will have it with a 6-0 lead. Caleb Snyder had the four-yard touchdown. The two-point conversion was missed, so that's where we're at. It's 6-0. Time for the Barber Styling Institute mustache cam as we are scanning this packed house tonight here in Halifax looking for some great mustaches. This is the Barber Styling Institute mustache cam. Yeah, you see a couple. Of, I see like three or four right there, right in the mix. I'm going to go with the last one. It's the better one. Well, there's another one. Two, two of them. Oh, my man right here in the, with the grape. No no shout to him, but, you know. Mustache Cam, always a favorite. There's a run up the middle. Plenty of room to run. May go all the way to the house, and he will. That is Bechtel taking it to the house for the uh, Irby, excuse me, Tyler Erdley with a touchdown, and that is his first rushing touchdown of the season. He just broke free, and then it was early with the speed for the junior getting his first rushing touchdown. He has four receiving. That's his first rushing touchdown of the season for Tyler Erdley, just like that. Speed is correct early. As soon as he got it, his, his feet and eyes were just looking for sick. You could just see it. Tough running, picking up a touchdown there. Two-point conversion. To go. That is your Pennsylvania Air National Guard touchdown as Upper Dolphin will go for two after that Tyler Erdley touchdown run. And Bingaman rolls out. He'll keep it himself and gets the two-point conversion after the long early touchdown. And Upper Dolphin is back on the board. And they have a 14-0 lead over Halifax. Here comes Early in for the Trojans touchdown. This is Friday Night Rivals. Tyler Erdley with three carries for 68 yards and that long touchdown. Two-point conversion good, and the Trojans have a two-touchdown lead. They lead it 14 to nothing. Halifax with five penalties for 45 yards. Halifax only 37 total yards of offense. The offense has been on the ground for Upper Dolphin. They have 149 yards of rushing yards already. They average 179 yards a game rushing. So they might close in on 200 yards rushing here in the first half. There's another high mark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Pennsylvania kickoff. The return up to the 24 yard line by Conrad on the return, the freshman. Coming up tomorrow on CBS 21, it's college football. The SEC at 3.30. It's Georgia and Auburn. Could be an interesting game. Watch that tomorrow. SEC on CBS 21 at 3.30. Then on Sunday, it's the Ravens and the Browns. 1 o'clock on CBS 21. Your weekend plans are set. College football tomorrow with the SEC. And then the Ravens and the Browns with the NFL on Sunday. Of course, it all starts at noon with the NFL today with JB and the guys. And a snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Penalty number six now for 50 yards for Halifax. So six penalties for 50 yards for the Wildcats. 
And we'll step aside and we'll be right back. Upper Dolphin with a 14-0 lead. Phil Shaner, Keon Claiborne tonight on your Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals on My TV Central PA. Halifax down 14-0 with the football. And to give to Miller. Miller gets a couple of yards. Gets three yards. So a 66-yard touchdown run by Early, and then a four-yard touchdown run by Snyder, the two rushing touchdowns tonight. All the damage by Upper Dolphin has been on the ground. And Halifax has had a hard time getting the offense started. Just a total of about 42 yards of total offense, and they now have six penalties for 50 yards tonight. So a second and long for them, second and 12 for Halifax from the 23-yard line for the sophomore Tegan Carroll. Miller with the carry, goes nowhere. Tackle for a loss. That'll be a one or two-yard loss as they were able to get to Miller quickly. Diefenbach made the stop for Upper Dolphin. Great shoelace tackle right there to get Miller down in the backfield. Third and long again, you know, here for this Wildcats offense in the first half. And you had to believe the coach said something to the Wildcats offensive line during that timeout about the penalties. Diefenbach has 47 tackles now, eight now for a tackle for a loss and has an interception and one sack this season. The seniors played well for this upper Dolphin defense. So third and long, Carroll, he's going to run. Carroll's knocked out of bounds at the 25, and that is going to be a late hit as he ran him right to the track, right on the Halifax sideline, and they get him out of there, but that'll be a personal foul on Upper Dolphin as that tackle continued all the way to the track. Take a look. And I don't even know how personal. I think he was just his momentum. Yeah. You can kind of see Carroll kind of just brought him with him, and their momentum was just drifting towards, oh, and yeah, at the end you can see the, the pull of the helmet from Carroll. Dead ball. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense. 15 yards, first down. So they called the penalty on Tyler Erdley, who, looked, who actually looked like, you know, maybe Carroll was rolling off Erdley to get him off him, and that's, it looked a lot worse than it was when you take another look. That's kind of uh, the quarterback, Tegan Carroll, that had Erdley's yeah. head and face mask and kind of threw him to the track. But when you see it the first time, it looked like it was early running Carroll out all the way to the track to make the tackle. Carroll's going to keep it as he pulls it away from Miller's belly, and he takes a hit right at the 45-yard line after picking up two yards. Not much going there for Carroll on the keeper. Here's White Helmets, good pursuit right there from that Trojans defense. Stay tuned for the West Shore Home Halftime Report. Highlights and stats from the first half, plus the best high school football highlights from around the country. The czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt, will tell us about some of the top Pennsylvania college press prospects. All coming up, the West Shore Home Halftime Report. And Keon will be down on the field to talk to both head coaches at the half. So a lot coming up. 14-0, Upper Dolphin with the lead. 5.50 to go here in the second quarter. And a second down for the sophomore quarterback who's going to throw it up and incomplete, looking for Renninger. 
Third down coming up now for the Wildcats. The Wildcats put up 169 points in their first five games of the season. They're averaging 286 yards of total offense, about 136 on the ground and 150 through the air. Halifax and Coach Wall in his first season trying to get this program turned around. They have struggled over the last couple of years. One and nine last year, and they've won a couple of seasons where they only had one win, and that was against the Hancock team from Maryland that they beat last year, and they beat them this year in week three, 53 to six. That was one of their three wins this season. But they put up some gawky numbers in the first five games of the season. Here comes some pressure. The sophomore running backwards. Carroll now is going to have to tuck, and he gets out of bounds at the 39-yard line and a leap over the bench. And a fourth down coming up. Just nowhere to go from the start. That pressure, look, the pressure right there almost got sacked in the backfield and just had to eat it and take it to the sideline. Fourth down. Carroll, 5 of 10, passing for 30 yards. Fourth down, and the Wildcats will punt it back to the Trojans at the 537 mark of the second quarter. Coach Smeltz's team, the defending Liberty Division champs, four starters back on offense, three starters back on defense from last year. They did lose 16 players in the senior class from a year ago. Punt takes a bounce and is going to be touched at the 31-yard line. And that's where the Trojans will have it. Coach Smeltz has won 47 games in his seven years at Upper Dolphin. So just 21 losses. It was done pretty well. He remembers the days when Upper Dolphin was a true powerhouse and he made the challenge of bringing the program back to that level and he's kind of done that. And that's what they want to do at, Halif at Halifax and Coach Wall. Exactly what Coach Smeltz did at Upper Dolphin. Upper Dolphin last season was 8-3. and three. They were undefeated in the Liberty Division. They lost to Hamburg in the District 3 playoffs last year. Up to the 35-yard line on the handoff on this wing T look. And that is Caleb Schneider, who has a touchdown tonight. Picks up four yards on that run. Schneider's a junior, tough kid. Six rushing touchdowns on the season for Schneider. Got one tonight. They're two star runners, Schneider and Erdley, both have touchdowns. Tyler's touchdown was a 66-yarder. Handoff. That is Erdley. Goes backwards and then forwards. Good job by the Halifax defense. Only got back to the line of scrimmage. There was a lot of black jerseys getting to the football, and that's what Coach Wall said. That's the key on this defense. You got to get guys to the football. Coming in to make sure he got down was big Landon Klinger. You know, he's been all over the field tonight for this Wildcats defense. Klinger, the 6'1", 230-pound senior. There he is, big number 59. Third down for the Trojans. Bingaman, the throw over the head of his target, looking for angle, and there's a penalty marker down. These two teams are rivals. Bragging rights for the year is on the line between these two schools that are just 13 miles apart. So they run into each other a lot. Kurt Miller's had okay. a busy first half. Here's his call. Ineligible downfield. On the offense, penalties declined, fourth down. Penalty was an upper dolphin, they'll decline the penalty, so a fourth down coming up for the Trojans with a 14-0 lead. Coach Smeltz, he likes to go for it. He doesn't like to punt much. See if they punt here or not. 4.03 to go second quarter. West Shore Home Halftime Report is coming up. Hard to believe this is the final Friday in September and we're already at week six of the high school football season. Week six and the final Friday in September. Bingaman does the punting, boots this one. Ball is in and out of the hands of Peter Rank. Good thing he held on to that one. That was 
Peter had it and then lost it. Wildcats will have the ball at the 41-yard line. Next week will be in the mid-pen Colonial in week number seven. Greencastle, the Blue Devils are four and one. Last week, their first loss of the season, they lost a, a very good East Pennsboro team. And they're taking on one and four Northern York, so they should be five and one going into the game next week against Hannah. Like I said, Hannah, they're three and two. Susquehanna Township lost both their games by one to Mechanicsburg and Milton Hershey. So Coach Heaton's team's having a good year. We'll be in the mid-pen Colonial next week for that matchup in week seven on the first Friday in October in one week here on my TV Central PA. The ball is batted down and incomplete. Coming quickly to knock that ball down. Austin just getting in the backfield, getting a hand on it. Thought it was up for grabs, but great stop right there to get in the backfield and incompletion. Duplusi makes the play, the junior. He has five sacks this year. This is an Upper Dolphin team that comes into this game with 16 sacks. <laughs> he has five. We haven't talked about the freshman, number 12, Owen Savage. He has four sacks. He is not, he does not play like a freshman. Coach said if you'd see him at practice, you would think he was a junior. Definitely, he doesn't carry himself as a freshman. Second down, Halifax going to the air, looking for rank and incomplete. If he would have got it into rank, rank would have had the first down and a whole lot more, but Owen Carroll overthrew Peter Rank, the senior wide receiver. So it's another third down coming up for the Wildcats. Trying to find their offense. They certainly found it all season long. They put up 40 points in the win over Midwest. 53 points over Hancock, the team from Maryland. They put up 43 points against James Buchanan in their three wins. In their two losses, they had two touchdowns each. They lost to Hamburg 49-14, and last week to Judiana 35-14. Third and 10. Carroll will keep it. Goes upfield and has a first down. Gets up with a bath fitter first down, and the Halifax fans want another penalty marker on Carroll being taken out of bounds. Carroll with a 17-yard gain and a first down run. Take another look, and the Halifax fans not happy with the late hit. Yeah, good keeper from Carroll, and just look at the end of this play here, Phil. Never want to see that. Just a tough run and then a pull from him. And smacks his head on the ground. Give Look. him 20 yards on that game. Seems to be all right. Got it up to the upper Dolphin 40-yard line on that 20-yard quarterback run by Tegan Carroll, the sophomore. He's going to get the play from Coach Wall with 3.36 to go in the second quarter. Trojans up 14-0. Plesi, they're 17. This junior that has five sacks, nine tackles for a loss this season. So maybe this will spark the Wildcats after that nice run by their sophomore quarterback. Give it to Miller. Miller has five yards, and he's out of bounds. Tough run by Miller up to the 44, so give him six. So a second and four after that tough run by Isaac Miller. Miller, the 5'10", 190-pound senior. And Miller, every time he's kind of got it here in this first half, hadn't had many touches. You know, we talked about him in the pregame, but he's had some positive yards when he did get the ball. Second and short now for Halifax. This would be big if they could punch in some points here before the half. You're in homecoming tonight in this big rivalry game. 3.30 to go, third quarter. Give it right back to Miller. Spins off a tackle. Still on his feet, and then he is tripped up. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. As he is tripped up by Engel, number four. Kind of was bumped out of the hole. He was trying to hit from the beginning and had to get spun out to the outside. Brought down. Engel's another guy with uh, now 50 tackles on the season and an interception. So you have Schneider with over 50 tackles, Engel with over 50 tackles. Diefenbach closing in at over 50 tackles. This is some defense that Upper Dolphin has. Third and five. Ball on the 35-yard line for the sophomore Tegan Carroll. Pressure's coming. 
They like to sack the quarterback. Teagan fires, crosses body, incomplete. Ball was nearly intercepted. He was looking for Bechtel. That's a tough throw to make for Carroll. There was a lot of pressure coming, and he had to throw across his body to the opposite side of the field to Bechtel. Yeah, I'm surprised he even got rid of it, and Bechtel almost even had a chance to bring it down as well as that uh, throws defense, but fourth and about four now, so let's see what they can do. Number 20, Erdley was there almost with his an interception. That ball was very close. It was out of Bechtel's hands and then right to Erdley's hands, who has the big touchdown tonight of 66 yards. That was very close to the fourth interception of the season for the Upper Dolphin defense. So a fourth and five, and the Wildcats are going for it. They need a couple of yards for a first down. Bechtel with the catch, and he is going nowhere. Bechtel made the catch, but got to the line of scrimmage, and that was it. Wasn't able to advance the football, so Upper Dolphin takes over on downs. Roadcap, the senior, in on the big tackle right there to make sure that Bechtel could not advance. And a perfect breakdown and you know, solo tackle from Roadcap to force that turnover on downs, and this Trojan offense now gets a chance to try to put another score up you know, before the half. Here was a good look at Teagan Carroll, the sophomore quarterback, a little frustrated after he had that 20-yard run that gave him a first down and put him in Upper Dolphin territory. Down 14-0, 2.27 to go, second quarter. West Shore home halftime report coming up. Here's Upper Dolphin. They would like to add to their two-touchdown lead. Ball inside run by Snyder, and he gets up to the 38-yard line, so picks up a couple. Miller made the stop for Halifax. Three-yard pickup, second and seven. Mason Enders there. Look at him. 6'3", 160-pound senior. He has two interceptions. And Hallow. There's... Caleb Snyder on the upper Dolphin side. Again, it's Snyder running close to a first down, but he has stopped shy of the first down marker. He'll be shy about a yard or two. Caleb Snyder on that run. Klinger made the stop for Halifax. Look at Snyder's run here. Third down coming up. Snyder has the first touchdown of the night in a four-yard touchdown run. His sixth rushing touchdown of the season. He let it 6 nothing, And then Tyler Erdley went 66 yards for his first rushing touchdown of the season, his fifth touchdown overall. Running to the right side. Goes the sophomore, Carter Trubelvis. Sophomore's had a couple of big carries. And 24 carries for 157 yards coming in. Averaging 6.5 a carry. And he's a, as Coach said, the hardest worker. Did not miss a workout the entire summer. They were surprised at Carter. They knew they had to replace all those seniors last year that were running backs for Upper Dolphin. And Coach said that Carter, he knew that Caleb and Tyler were going to be good, but he's very happy with the way Carter has played and how hard he's worked. Bingaman going to throw the football, has the completion far side. The ball's on the ground. Could be the second turnover of the night, and it is. A fumble by Upper Dolphin and another Halifax fumble recovery, and that now is fumble recovery number 10 on the season by this Halifax defense. The pass was caught and then dropped, and Halifax has the ball as... McCartney had the fumble recovery for Halifax. So how about 10 fumble recoveries for this Wildcat defense? Ray Belvis had the catch, and then the sophomore put it on the turf. So let's see if Halifax's offense can do something with the turnover. The second fumble of the game for Upper Dolphin. Under a minute to go in the first half, 52 seconds to go. Carroll with the pitch. Far side, picks up a couple of yards. That is Isaac Miller on the run. Good first down carry for Miller. Six yard pickup, second and four. And there's a timeout 
Let's see if there is. Let's see if there's timeout. maybe the officials. We'll have to wait to see if one of the teams called timeout or not. As Kurt Miller is talking to his crew. Doesn't appear that anyone called timeout. Oh, they're going to change the uh, change the clock. Add, us, add some time. Between the two teams, eight pass attempts for over 20 yards. It's definitely been a game featured running the football, and that's exactly fine for both coaches. That's what they talked about this week. They wanted to establish the run. Carroll from the gun, fires it downfield, has a man, the ball is caught down to the 20-yard line. Pretty pass play. And a bath fitter first down, and the catch by Mason Enders, his ninth catch of the season. What a throw by Carroll, just dropped it in, and Enders was there to catch it. Pretty pass by the sophomore quarterback, Carroll to Enders, and it has the Wildcats in business with 36 seconds to go before the half. That was nice. Inside the 20, the ball sits about the 18-yard line. So in the red zone for the Wildcats, they could really, really could use a touchdown here before the half. Here comes pressure. Carroll fires again to the end zone. Incomplete. Was looking for Enders again. Almost trying to do the exact same thing he did on that last long pass play. Throw it right over the defender's head, right into Enders' arms. Now 17 seconds on the clock and a second down for the Wildcats. Ball's on the 19-yard line. In the red zone, they have to take advantage of these opportunities to score. Down 14-0 on homecoming. Big crowd here tonight. This mid-pen Liberty matchup. Two rivals, that's for sure. Bragging rights on the line, and someone jumped. Upper Dolphins pointing over on the Halifax side. Halifax is pointing at Upper Dolphin, and here is Kurt Miller with the final say. Snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty. Still second down. Coach Wall's not going to be happy with all the penalties. They have really hurt Halifax tonight. Seven penalties on the night. 55 yards worth of penalties in this first half for Coach Wall and his Halifax team. Halifax is 13 sophomores on the roster, seven freshmen, a, a senior class of eight, and a junior class of six. 34 total. They have 31 dressed tonight. So a small roster. Carroll's pass going to the end zone. Almost caught. Had his mitt on it, did Ethan Renninger, but unable to come down with it. He did get his hands on it. Take another look here. That would have been some kind of catch. Renninger did get a hand on it, but incomplete. Third down, 11 seconds to go before our West Shore home halftime report. Keon Claiborne is down on the field. He'll talk to Coach Smeltz before our halftime show as Upper Dolphin run off the field before half. And there's a timeout on the field, and we'll be back with a big third down coming up with 11 seconds to go before the half. Eleven seconds to go, a third and 15 for the Wildcats. Down 14, nothing. Carroll, incomplete, throws it short of his intended target. 
Harford. Harford, the big target, 6'4", 175 pound senior, Landon Harford and his brother Luke is a sophomore, also 6'3", so the Offords are big targets for quarterback. There is Offord being talked to by Coach Wall on the sideline. So now fourth down, seven seconds to go. This would be very big for Halifax if they could get in the end zone before the half. Fourth and 15, seven seconds to go. Halifax with three wide receivers, bottom of your screen. Carroll's going the opposite way, looking for a penalty as he was trying to get the football to Enders, and the flag comes out. So there will be pass interference here. There's two seconds left on the clock as he was looking to get the ball to Enders. They had the three wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Enders was the one wide receiver on the far side, and that's where the sophomore Teagan Carroll went, and a pass interference call made. Pass interference. Defense, 15 yards. Take another look. The throw right there. <laughs> Pass interference call. Hit road cap, number eight, right in the helmet. So Carroll was trying to get the ball to Enders. There's two seconds left. Upper Dolphin up 14-0. Snyder with a four-yard touchdown. Tyler... Erdley with a 66-yard touchdown. That's the two scores for Upper Dolphin. So now they'll work things out. Kurt Miller and his crew. The first and goal coming up for the Trojans. So they have one more play to try to get in the end zone. And they'll take a timeout here with two seconds to go before our West Shore home halftime report. Coming up at half, we'll have some good things for you. Highlights, stats from the first half, the best high school football highlights from around the country. The czar, Emory Hunt, will tell us about some of the top Pennsylvania college prospects. All coming up in the West Shore Home Halftime Report. Hey, during our halftime show, be sure to watch for the giant food recipe of the week featuring a great meal you can make at home with your family. It's all coming up in our West Shore Home Halftime Report. Week number six of... Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals. This is our spotlight of the mid pen Liberty Division, the smaller schools. Used to be the Tri-Valley Football Conference, and then they got sucked up by the mid pen Liberty Division. With other games tonight in the mid pen Liberty. Lime Mountains at Newport, Judiana at James Buchanan. Camp Hill is at Susquehanna tonight. So the teams in the mid pen Liberty, Upper Dolphin, Juniana, Lime Mountain, Halifax, Susquehanna, and Newport. So here we go. Big opportunity for the Wildcats. Two seconds to go before the half, and after the pass interference call, let's see what the Wildcats do. And there's a timeout. Upper Dolphin will take it. So the chess match continues. Halifax, Halifax sets something up. They come out and give a look, and Coach Smeltz takes a timeout for Upper Dolphin to set up his defense. Two seconds to go, 14 nothing Upper Dolphin. This would be huge for Halifax. For the homecoming coming up at the half to go into the locker room. Down just a score. Good crowd, student sections are packed. Upper Dolphin, they have a roster of 46. They have 14 seniors, 11 juniors, five sophomores, and 16 freshmen on their roster. They are a class 3A school. Of course, Halifax is just a single A school. Here we go. Final play of our first half. Halifax looking for a score. The sophomore quarterback, Tegan Carroll, leads his Wildcats out as Miller stands next to him. Watch for Peter Rank, he's their top receiver. See if they can get Rank the football. There's a penalty marker down and they do get it to Rank. Peter Rank comes up. There's a penalty marker down as Peter Rank is fired up. Again, the Friday Night Rival cameras here two years ago when Peter Rank was just a sophomore and he put on a show that night. Interference on the defense. Half the distance. 
still first down. So the second pass interference call of this drive, and extends it and gives Halifax another play. There you see as they were trying to guard Peter Rank. Rank with just one touchdown this season, but he has a career of touchdowns here at Halifax. He's been very good for the last three, four years. Who's finally now a senior. His brother Andrew is a sophomore on the team. There's a look at Tegan Carroll. Halifax is really close now here, an untimed down with the pass interference call. So Rank is at the bottom of your screen. And there's a timeout call. Upper Dolphin will look things over and talk things over defensively. This is a key play in this game. 14-0 or possibly 14-7 or 8 is what we're looking at here for Halifax to get on the board. A team that has scored a ton of points this year. Coming in, 169 points in five games. That's an average of 33.8 points a game for this Halifax team. Has only won a couple of games in the last handful of years. And this year, already three and two with a three-game win streak. So what will Halifax do? You got to think Peter Rank, number 11. They had him lined up on the bottom of your screen, which would be the right side. Two pass interference calls in this drive that have kept Halifax alive. Here's a look at Coach Smeltz. Coach Smeltz, a former defensive coordinator at Newport, also a Bloomsburg University assistant coach. Here we go. Untimed down for Halifax. Carroll rolls out to his right. Throws it. Catch is made, but out of bounds. So that's the final play of the first half. Had the completion to Bechtel, but Bechtel caught it out of bounds. So the Wildcats couldn't get into the end zone. And we'll wait to see what Coach Smeltz, the upper Dolphin coach, has to say to Keon down on the field about this first half. So Upper Dolphin, they have a 14-0 lead. The West Shore Home Halftime Report is coming up. We'll wait for Keon down on the field with Coach Ken Smeltz to get his thoughts on this first half. That was a big, big deal by his defense to come up and keep Halifax out of the end zone despite two pass interference calls that aided to the drive. So wait for Coach Smeltz to catch up to Keon and get a word from him before we start our West Shore home halftime report here at Halifax tonight. It is homecoming tonight. So a big crowd here are these two rivals, backyard rivals with bragging rights on the line. Coach Smeltz is getting into position with Keon. So we'll send it down on the field to Keon and Coach. Take it away, Keon. Thank you, Phil. Hey, Coach, I'm here with how, how was the first half for you guys? Got a two-score lead. What things did you like from the team there? Uh, well, I, I thought our offense did fine. Um, we just got to catch the ball, be a little bit more consistently catching the ball. Some of those penalties hurt us on defense, but we're, we're playing fine. Um, we just need to settle down, and we'll, we'll be good. Yes, sir, best of luck in the second half. Thank you. Back to you, Phil. West Shore Home Halftime re is coming up. You are watching the Wellspan Sports Medicine Friday Night Rivals. Upper Dolphin with a 14-0 lead over Halifax. We'll be back.
This is the West Shore Home Halftime Report. Big night in Halifax. It is homecoming tonight, and their rival, Upper Dolphin, is in town. A big game in the mid-pen Liberty Division. Upper Dolphin with a 14-0 lead at the half. Time now for some of the best highlights from around the country from Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals. Enjoy. The best Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals highlights from across the country. Boone looks over the middle, has a man wide open, caught at the 10, making a move, hurtling oh. into the end zone. Touchdown, Hurricanes! Jalen Moore breaks one. Hezzies. Moore is loose. Breaks another. Come on, Jalen. Cut it back. Jalen Moore, not one, not two, not three, but four touchdowns. Looking to throw. Pressure. Oh! He gets hit. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. Oh, and. Holy cow. First and goal. Far over the goal. Pass complete for a Viking touchdown. Keith Henry with 11 seconds left. Placement. It's up. And it is going to be good. 52 yards. Field goal from Caleb Willis. Football. Bates has time. Goes to the end zone. Did he catch it? He yeah. catch it. Lineker. Mason Lineker. From the one and a half. Hand off to Cates. Is he in? Is he in? I haven't seen the signal. He's, He's in. in. He's in. Williams will win. Williams will win. Wow. 36-35 in overtime. Some great game winners on the highlights from across the country tonight. We're at the half. It is homecoming here in Halifax tonight. The Trojans trying to ruin the party. They have a 14-0 lead. More of the West Shore Home Halftime Report is coming up. This is the West Shore Home Halftime Report. Upper Dolphin with 176 yards rushing and a two-touchdown lead. They lead it at the half, 14-0 over Halifax in this mid-pen 
Liberty Division matchup on homecoming. Time for take a look at some of the best high school football players in the country and where they might go to college. It's time to check in with the czar of the playbook, our buddy, Amory Hunt. It's time to go to school with Amory. What's up, everybody? Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Welcome to Football Game Plans 400, where we will take a look at some of the top high school prospects across the state of Pennsylvania. We'll take a look at an offensive prospect as well as a defensive prospect that you want to keep an eye on. Rico Scott out of Bishop McDevitt High School is one of my favorite prospects across the country, let alone the state of Pennsylvania. You talk about someone that's a legit game breaker that can change the game in an instant. He can win deep. He can win short. He can win at the intermediate level. He has his speed and explosiveness that you want. He's a rack player, which is run after the catch player. He's been well coached at Bishop McDevitt High School. So you can see why Nick Saban would want his services coming down there to Tuscaloosa because he is one heck of a football player. Declan Piscatello out of Richland High School in Johnstown, Pennsylvania is someone that projects as either a guard or a defensive tackle at the collegiate level. He has a core power and strength and wants to everything that you look for for a point of attack player. So that's it for this edition of Football Game Plans 400. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. All right, Czar, thanks for the knowledge. We'll see you again next week during our West Shore Home Halftime Report. Upper Dolphin with a 14-0 lead over the Wildcats. We'll be back with more after this. This is the West Shore Home Halftime Report. Upper Dolphin has done the damage on the ground tonight. They lead it by two touchdowns, 14 to nothing. Let's take a look at our first half highlights brought to you by West Shore Home and how we got to this 14 nothing score. Caleb Schneider scored the first touchdown of the game, a four yard touchdown run, his sixth touchdown of the season. Watch this play. The wing tee run nicely. Tyler Erdley goes 66 yards and they got the two point conversion. It was 14 nothing. Turnovers 
How about Halifax? They have 10 fumble recoveries in the season, two of them tonight against Upper Dolphin. Halifax tries to get something going. Mason Enders with a nice catch and a pretty pass by Tegan Carroll. Couple of pass interference calls, the untimed down, the final play of the first half, chance to get in the end zone. Bechtel catches it, but he was out of bounds. Let's take a look at the stats. Upper Dolphin, 176 yards rushing, 32 yards through the air, so 208 total yards for the Trojans. For Halifax, 43, 43 yards on the ground, 62 in the air for 105. Those two fumbles by Upper Dolphin, the two turnovers. Penalties big, 77 or seven penalties for Halifax for 55 yards and five penalties for 50 yards for Upper Dolphin. So quite a few penalties on both teams in that first half. Second half is coming up when we get back. You're watching the Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals. It's Upper Dolphin 14, Halifax. It's the West Shore Home Halftime Report, and it's homecoming tonight at Halifax. The homecoming queen will be announced shortly. Coming up next week, hard to believe, week seven will be the first Friday in October, and week seven will be in the mid Penn Colonial next week. See the Blue Devils, the Green Castle were four and one to take on Susquehanna Township. As I mentioned before, it's Susquehanna Township is three and two. They had a big win over Shippensburg last week. Tonight, they're at Waynesboro. Their two losses were just by one point. And Greencastle, GA, should be five and one. They're taking on one and four Northern New York tonight. So that's a big game next week in the mid Penn Colonial, week seven of Friday Night Rivals. To, to, so don't forget, it's going to be big next week. Don't forget tomorrow college football SEC on CBS 21 it's Georgia and Auburn tomorrow at 3 30 should be a good game and then the NFL on CBS 21 it's the Ravens and the Browns Sunday one o'clock it all gets started with the NFL today at noon from New York all right here on CBS 21 so your weekend is all set that is for sure so the second half coming up 14-0 Upper Dolphin over Halifax. Halifax had an opportunity to score right at the end of the first half. Got a couple of got a couple of pass interference calls to aid their chances of scoring. They weren't able to score after putting up the most points in the mid pen Liberty Division this year. We'll take another break before the second half. We'll step aside. You're watching the West Shore Home Halftime Report. Upper Dolphin 14, Halifax nothing.
This is the West Shore Home Halftime Report. Let's go down on the field as Keon's with Coach Wall to talk about his Halifax Wildcats trailing 14-0 at the half. Keon? Great. Thank you, Phil. Two-score deficit, Coach, going into this, you know, this third quarter. What are some things that you guys are going to have to do to get this win tonight? Well, we have to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. Uh, we're putting ourselves behind the st uh, sticks every play, every series. Uh, so I think we got things straightened out. So hopefully our kids are going to be ready to play the second half with the motion that we finished, the momentum we had at the end of the first half. Yes, sir. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Keon. And Coach, Regan Schultz was named the homecoming queen here tonight on homecoming. So congratulations to Regan. Time as we have a few minutes as our extended halftime report here with homecoming at Halifax. We have time for a little bit more from the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. He'll tell us about a few more top Pennsylvania college prospects. So let's ring the class bell again and get some knowledge from the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. What's up, everybody? Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Welcome to Football Game Plans 400, where we will take a look at some of the top high school prospects across the state of Pennsylvania. We'll take a look at an offensive prospect as well as a defensive prospect that you want to keep an eye on. Nick Slogic of Bishop McDevitt High School at 6'5", 235 pounds, is a tremendous athlete that has already committed to East Carolina in both football and baseball. So that speaks volumes to the athleticism that this guy possesses. He can play either side of the ball, but I think his home at the next level is on the defensive line because of what he does from a length, athleticism, and core strength perspective. He does a fantastic job versus the run and should develop into a quality defensive end. John Updike of Davidsville, Pennsylvania is a terrific athlete, participates in multiple sports in his high school and does a great job at the quarterback position. You're going to see some touch on his deep ball right here in this clip and also the ability to create when things are not as clear. He's able to get outside the pocket and shows that speed and that athleticism to get down the sideline for the score. So that's it for this edition of Football Game Plans 400. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Anytime we get some bonus coverage from the czar of the playbook is a good night here week six of Welsh Band Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals. We're at the half, getting ready to start the second half. Upper Dolphin with a 14-0 lead over Halifax, but Halifax will get the ball to start the second half. They had a golden opportunity there to get some points on the board before the half. Two pass interference calls by Upper Dolphin. They had an untimed down, and Carroll completed the pass to Bechtel, but he was out of bounds. Carroll, 7 of 21 for 62 yards passing. They've only... They have 43 yards on the ground and 62 yards in the air, does Halifax offensively. What really killed them, seven penalties for 55 yards. That was a big factor for them. And the other side, Upper Dolphin doing great. Most of their damage coming on the ground, 176 yards. They had the two fumbles. There's our high mark, Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Pennsylvania kickoff to start the second half of action. And here, Halifax trying to get something going on special teams as Bechtel, the sophomore, with a nice return out across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Bechtel has a return of 22 yards. So Halifax will have the football down 14-0. Upper Dolphin 2-0 in Liberty play, along with Judiata and Lime Mountain, the teams that are undefeated in mid-pen Liberty action. Upper Dolphin won the Liberty a season ago, would like to do it again. Miller straight ahead. Good run by Miller. Pickup of seven. Second and three coming up. Miller going strong straight ahead. Sure, that's a great description right there. You can see Miller 
picking up big yards, shoving defenders off of them. See if this uh, Halifax offense, like you said, Coach, I met or when I talked to Coach at halftime, not shoot themselves in the foot this half in those big plays. Miller got eight, second and two. These are the down and distance you like as a play caller. Carroll going to throw it up, looking for Renninger and incomplete. Renninger, who had a catch for just one yard in the first half, he's down and looks like he's getting up slow at the 30 yard line. Time for OSS Health injury report. OSS Health, high quality orthopedic care as they're taking a look at Ethan Renninger who has six catches now on the season for 100 yards, the 6'1", 170-pound senior, the injured player. Next week in the Mid-Pen Liberty, the games, Halifax at Lime Mountain, Newport at Susquehanna, Bowling Springs at Judiana, and James Buchanan will be at Upper Dolphin next week in this Mid-Pen Liberty division. So there is our OSS Health. High quality of orthopedic care, injury report. Halifax would like to take this opening drive of the second half and get on the board. They weren't able to cash in to end the first half. They would like to do it here to get right back in the football game. Third down, they were two of seven on third downs in the first half. So they want to improve on that. This is a third and short for the Wildcats. Straight ahead goes Carroll, pushes the pile forward. He has the first down just shy of midfield, gets to midfield, and a three-yard pickup on the Wildcat. Carroll took it and ran it. That was designed all the way, and that gives a kitchen saver first down run. Strong run there by the sophomore. Definitely was, and you know, move the chains. Carroll, strong run. Carroll averaging over six yards a carry this season. He has seven rushing touchdowns, 281 yards rushing, the second leading rusher on this team. Carroll will keep it himself. Carroll has much more, and he's into Upper Dolphin territory. A kitchen saver first down and more. An 18-yard pickup by Teagan Carroll. And we didn't see much of Tegan Carroll running the football in the first half, but they're going to that to that now. Only 43 yards rushing for the Wildcats in their opening half. Tegan Carroll, the second leading rusher on this Halifax team, has that 18-yard run and a first and 10 up to the 32. Now they hand it to Miller. Miller straight ahead. Miller has close to a first down, and he does give him 10 yards and a first down and another kitchen saver first down. So an 18-yard run by Carroll, a 10-yard run by Miller, and the Wildcats are in business. Uh, Halif Halifax offense now starting to get some consistency here on this drive. You know, you've seen two big runs from Carroll and uh, another small run from Miller before and then that one. So let's see if they can continue to put together as this drive goes on. First and 10 from the 22-yard line for the Wildcats down two touchdowns. Miller straight ahead again, moves the pile and picks up three or four yards on that first down carry. So they're pounding the rock here in this second half. Coach Wall, his first season with the Wildcats after 11 seasons as a head coach at Northern Lebanon and nine seasons as a head coach at Millersburg. He's also a head coach at Bishop O'Reilly when he was fresh out of college. Played football at Bloomsburg and coached at Wilkes for a couple of seasons as well. Division three college football. The pitch. Miller again. Now they're sticking to the ground game. They tried to throw it more than they tried to run it in the first half. But here now, showing their physicality. Miller on the outside run. Third and short coming up. Yeah, and it's been working here in this early in the second half. I think, honestly, like I said earlier, when Miller had some touches in the first half, they were four positive yards. So him and now Carroll getting involved has been a recipe for success. Three of eight on third downs tonight for Halifax. This is a third and four for them from the 16. Nowhere to go. The handoff to Miller, and you see 
the Trojans. White jerseys there to blow it up quickly. Like Alice, 53, blows it up. Big number 53. Good. Five tackles for a loss now in the season for him. Fourth down coming up. Halifax one for one on fourth downs in this game tonight. There's Mason, this 5'10", 160-pound senior there that blew the play up. Now here's Tegan Carroll. His team was successful on one fourth down in that first half. This is a big fourth down for them in the red zone. And there's a timeout on the field. Halifax takes a timeout. We'll step aside as well. A big fourth down coming up for the Wildcats. Big fourth down coming up for Halifax. They've been in this red zone a couple of times and they need points. Carroll rolls to the right, fires in and, in and out of the hands of Bechtel. So turnover on downs. So Halifax has ha had their chances in the red zone right before the end of the first half and then they take this drive with a couple of strong runs and then it stalls out. You gotta give credit to the upper Dolphin defense stepping up and making the stops in the red zone. This when you think Halifax is getting, you know, moving on this uh, offensive drive. You know, it's tough to go out there and turn it over on downs. But, you know, good stand right there from, you know, the Trojans. Bingham in the first half, three of nine passing for 32 yards. Snyder, 10 carries, 53 yards and a touchdown. Erdley, four carries, 68 yards and a touchdown. For that total of 176 yards on the ground by the Upper Dolphin Trojans in that first half. There you see the carry. First down run. He's a little upset with himself. I think he's seen a big, bigger alley. Kind of got slipped up. Bingaman going to throw it this time instead of running it has the completion in open field that's Snyder he's dangerous in open field gets into Halifax territory across the 50 down to the 48 yard line and that's good for a kitchen saver first down the completion Bingaman to Snyder a lot of run after catch for number seven the junior so upper dolphin working in wildcat territory at the 48 yard line with a 14-0 lead. Trying to start mid-pen Liberty Division play at 3-0. They know they have some big games later in the season in Week 8 at Judiana and then in Week 10 against Lime Mountain. That Lime Mountain game could be for the Liberty Division title. Hand off right side, a good first down run. Picks up six yards. The sophomore, that's his fourth carry. Close to 60 yards running. And you kind of pick your poison because, like, you know, Snyder was successful running as well in the first half. And, like, these backs have gotten touches all night. It's th thunder and lightning kind of combination with them. Second and five. Outside run to Erdley. Erdley has the first down up to the... 35-yard line, and that'll be a kitchen savior first down 
for Erdley, and Erdley's fifth carry. He has over 70 yards, and of course he had that long touchdown run. 66 of those yards were the touchdown that he had to make it 14 nothing. Snyder 77 all-purpose yards and a touchdown. Caleb Snyder doing it, running the ball and catching it as well. Bingaman rolling out to the right, fires across his body, backside, incomplete. Threw it down close to the goal line. Bingaman's pass off the mark. He's now three of 10 on the night, passing for 32 yards. He was looking for Hepler, was the attended target. Hepler has one catch for nine yards. So only three comp completions tonight by this Upper Dolphin offense, passing the ball for the junior, Aiden Bingaman. He was completing 57% of his passes coming in tonight. Last year as a sophomore, completed 58. But last year they thought of more of him as a game manager. The pressure on Bingaman this year, as coach said, hey, you're the man, we want you to be a game changer. Fires. He's had a lot of drops as well. That one hits the shoulder pads and falls short and incomplete. And that's been a, an issue where Isaac Jackson, the freshman, could come up with the catch. So he's probably, I would say, go back to the way the game started, Keon. I would say that Bingman probably's had four, four or five drops. I was about to say, yeah, out of, out of that three of 11 incompletions, you know, majority of them have been just drops. You know, a couple of them are a little overthrow and off target, but majority of them have just been dropped balls. You know, it, the, it's not to blame the receivers. It's wet out there. You know, the ball's getting a little slippery, but they would have reeled some of those in. Could have some more positive yards. The last one dropped by a freshman. One of 16 freshmen that Upper Dolphin has on their roster of 46. Snyder has the first down and more tackled inside the 20 down to the 16 yard line and a penalty marker comes out. Harford made the stop. We'll have to wait for the penalty marker. So he got enough for the first down on the run. Four drops tonight by the Upper Dolphin receivers. Halifax was penalized seven times for 55 yards in the first half. Hey, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. 15 yards from the end of the play it is a first down. Upper Dolphin now penalized five times for 60 yards. That'll be a 15-yarder. There you see it there as Snyder doing some talking there of uh, Landon Arford, the senior, made the stop on Snyder. You don't want to give yards back after a big game like that, you know. The Wildcats, though, they need to find a way to score. They've been in the red zone a couple of times and unable to cash in, and they are being shut out 14-0. A team that is averaging all those points per game. And there's the sophomore. Bellis, Carter running, get some of those yards back, get him in space, and he can do some damage. And kind of slips up there at the end, but, but picked up a little bit to get back from what Snyder had lost from, you know, the penalty. So Carter, Dre Bellis, it's been a pleasant surprise. The third guy in the stable that can run the football for these Trojans. We'll give the draw. Mm. Nice play. That faked everybody. Yeah. Tyler Erdley with his second Erdley. touchdown run of the night from 32 yards out. And that fooled just about everybody on that play. They waited and just handed off to Erdley for the 32-yard touchdown. Definitely fooled me for sure. Early just sat and sat and waited. Great trick creation right there from that Trojans offense. That's your Pennsylvania Air National Guard touchdown. Early with his second rushing touchdown of the night. Now two on the season and his sixth overall touchdown. 
Hurdley from 32 yards for the Trojan touchdown, and it's 20 0. And they go for two. See if they can get the two point conversion. Bigaman going to throw and has the two point conversion rather easily as he gets the completion to angle for the two point conversion. Tyler Early's having a night. He has a 66 yard touchdown run, and this 32 yard touchdown run. And the Trojans up 22 0. Tyler Early having a night, six carries, 101 yards, and two touchdowns for the junior for Upper Dolphin. High mark blue cross and blue shield of Pennsylvania kickoff. See if the Wildcats can get something going. On the return up to the 35-yard line. Time to raise the roof on our Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals. Upper Dolphin, only 13 miles away from Halifax. Their fans are here. They're raising the roof. Abel Sun roofing and siding. Raise the roof on homecoming. Big crowd here tonight. Carnival before the game, the fourth annual carnival. A lot of folks at that. There's the student section. We're raising the roof. Abel Sun roofing and siding. So it's 22-0. Snyder had the first touchdown, then it's been the Tyler Early show. A 66-yard touchdown run, and just a few moments ago, a 32-yard touchdown run. There's the Halifax cheerleaders trying to get their team going. They can't get going in the red zone tonight. They're 0 for 3 when they've gotten to the red zone with scoring opportunities. There's an injured player on the field. That's our OSS Health injury report. OSS Health, high-quality orthopedic care. So taking a look at Bechtel. Cohen Bechtel, Bechtel, the 5'9", 195-pound sophomore, who has three catches for 10 yards tonight. So Upper Dolphin next week, take on James Buchanan, then at Judiana, which is a big game in week eight, big spring in week nine, and then could be for the Liberty Division title when they take on Lime Mountain in Week 10. For Halifax, next week a tough game for them at Lime Mountain, then Susquehanna, Newport, and Trinity, the games remaining. So pretty tough schedule the rest of the way next couple of weeks for the Halifax Wildcats who got out to a 3-2 and two start to the season. Here's a sack. They have a bunch of sacks this season. They had 16 sacks coming in, and there is number 17 as come up and make the big sack. Diefenbach with the sack. That's his second sack of the season and sack number 17 as a team for the Upper Dolphin defense. He shot out of the cannon right there to get in that backfield and make that sack. Just flying all over the field. This Upper, Dol Upper Dolphin whole team is just playing with maximum confidence right now. Upper Dolphin. Would love to defend their Liberty Championship. They were 6-0 last year in the Liberty Division. Lost in the first round of the District 3 playoffs to Hamburg, 49-35. They were 8-3 overall a season ago. Back-to-back -back sacks. They didn't have one in the first half, but they put two on here. And now 18 sacks, and there's a penalty marker thrown. A little too much on the celebration for their 18th team sack. 
That is Owen Savage, the first we've heard from the freshman. Looking like a freshman. That's his fifth sack. But the penalty marker will be on him. And Owen Savage, 6'3", 205-pound freshman. Does not look like a freshman. And Coach said about the size and the way he's played. He came into this game with 30 tackles and four sacks, 12 tackles for a loss. For unsportsmanlike so conduct sack number five on the for defense. Him. 15 yards. But a 15-yard penalty down. on Upper Dolphin, and that is going to upset that man on your screen right there. Coach Kent Smoltz will not be happy with his freshman. Talking to Coach before, he said, you know, if you come and see 12, the freshman, he doesn't look like a freshman, but he acted like a freshman there on that celebration right in front of the official, which cost them the penalty. It's a little too much. A little Co too much. Coach Smoltz will not be... Smelts will not be happy with that. There's a short completion to Redinger. And another flag comes down. So things getting chippy between these two rivals. Yeah, clear face mask right there. Snyder. Third down. So there's Kurt Miller with the face mask. So back-to-back -back penalties on the Trojans. All Halifax needs is to break one and get in the end zone to make this a game. And how and how now Upper Dolphin, the one kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit with penalties here, um, you know, in the second half. Now, granted, you know, they got a big lead, but, you know, they got to settle down on those penalties if you know, they want to continue to have it. Combined 14 penalties, 135 yards between these teams tonight. And it just keeps adding up. Trojan showing pressure. That's Carroll on the keeper. Carroll has the first down. He's in Trojan territory. Carroll all the way up to the 44-yard line. Another penalty marker is down. 17-yard run by Carroll. It's going to still be third down. Still going to be third down. It's live ball. Offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, still third down. So let's take a look and we can see the hold right there. Yeah. There you see it right there. That is Mason Enders, number seven, on the hold. That takes away the 18-yard run by Tegan Carroll, which would have gave the Wildcats a first down in Upper Dolphin territory. So now it pushes them back and puts them in a hole. And you said it, Phil. These penalties for both teams adding up continues. Three of nine on third downs for the Wildcats in this game. Trojan's going to bring pressure. And back to back sacks in this series. Could it be sack number three? Carroll rolling out, throws it. Incomplete, was looking to get the ball to Enders, and pass interference is called. Mason Enders was the intended target, and the third pass interference called the night on the Upper Dolphin defense. That'll give the Wildcats a first down on penalty. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot results in a first down. So the penalty gives them a first down. Now remember, there was two pass interference calls right before the end of the first half, which gave Halifax a great opportunity to score before the half, and they weren't able to. There's two great looks yeah. at that pass interference call. So a first down from the 46 for the Wildcats. Here comes pressure. They get the ball to Rennick. Rennick puts the ball on the turf and was able to come back to recover it. Rank, Peter Rank, comes back, makes the catch. A good job by Rank to come back. So he lost it. He said, oh, I got to go get the football. <laughs> Coughed it up and get it right back with road cap just Beautiful head on that one in football right there to make make rank even fumble it. Peter Rank had one catch for 16 yards in that first half. He has 14 grabs on the season. 230 yards receiving and one touchdown on the year for the senior, Peter Rank. Second down. Flag comes out. 
prior to the snap. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, I don't know if Upper Dolphin wants to make their coach Kent Smeltz upset, but boy, all the penalties on this drive are, are going to be brought up when they break down this film on Monday. Most definitely. There's Kurt Miller, our official, who's been busy tonight. A lot <laughs> of penalties. There's a look at Coach Smeltz. Not going to be happy. He knows if his team wants to repeat as Liberty Division champs, they cannot have these mental mistakes and all these penalties. Miller on the carry. Very close to a first down for Miller. Halifax, nine penalties for 85 yards. Upper Dolphin, eight penalties for 90 yards. And that is a first down for the Wildcats. That is a kitchen saver first down run by Isaac Miller, who had seven carries for 31 yards in the first half, had a catch for three yards for Miller. He's been the touchdown man. He has eight touchdowns on the season, the most in the mid-pen Liberty. Carroll has seven rushing touchdowns. Carroll throwing this time. Incomplete pass. Hit the helmet. It's intended target for Teagan Carroll, who played last year as a freshman and was really chased all over the place a year ago. That pass was intended for Renninger, incomplete. So Carroll has the experience. Definitely enjoying the game a little more this year with, uh, like I said, he didn't get sacked at all in the first four games of the season. And was sacked last week for the first time twice. Carroll has to carry it himself, and he's tackled at the 40-yard line, and that is Caleb, Caleb Snyder from his defensive end spot coming up to make yet another tackle. Snyder was able to get him for a tackle for a loss. And we are through three quarters. We're headed to the fourth. Upper Dolphin up 22-0. After starting the season one and two, Upper Dolphin trying to win three in a row. And more importantly, be three and zero oh in Mid Penn Liberty Division play. Football's on the turf. Incomplete pass. Carroll with an incomplete pass as Miller ends up on it, but it's incomplete. Take another look at that play. Carroll throws it. Miller drops it. Yeah, it's kind of been a tough night. Offensively as a whole, but definitely for Carroll in passing you know, in, in the air. Miller, 13 carries, 63 yards. Fourth down. Wildcats down 22 nothing. And some rain 
this morning and this afternoon here at Halifax. They play on natural grass, so see some of the mud and it's wet. Carroll's pass, nicely thrown, but incomplete. Offrey, the attended target, the big 6-4 target, unable to hook up for Tegan Carroll. Carroll, 9 of 28, 65 yards. His numbers tonight throwing the football. Had a lot of success in that three-game win streak over Midwest. Hancock, the team from Maryland, and James Buchanan. Well, they racked up all those points. Again, the Halifax offense comes into this game averaging almost 34 points a game, and they're being shut out here tonight. Straight ahead, that run there. Picks up 11 and a first down run. And that is a bath fitter first down. Bellis, the sophomore, Carter, with the run into Halifax territory at the 48 yard line. You see, he's injured on the sidelines. After that run. Coach Smeltz, he knew that he lost a lot of players from last year's undefeated team in the Liberty Division. 16 in that senior class, lost the top three rushers, gone to, graduate, gone, gone to graduation. He's done a nice job filling the void, and the wing tee is starting to wear down Halifax, another bath fitter first down. Back-to-back -back big runs. Look how elderly, just patient, even when he's moving upfield, it's like, He's moving, he's moving, and at the same time, he's being patient while picking up yards. He's been the star tonight. Touchdown runs of 66 and 32 yards for Tyler Erdley. Swing T wears on you. Two wide receivers, bottom of your screen now. Now they send the man in motion. They're going to throw it to the man coming out of, out of motion. And a penalty marker down after the catch by Diefenbach. Nolan Diefenbach was the one in motion and they got him the football to wait for the penalties. Plenty of them here tonight. But once again, here's our good friend Kurt Miller. We'll have the Champions Trophy presentation. Also, don't forget our catch of the night. Oh. Offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat, first down. The Anderson chimney sweeps catch of the night is coming up. Also the Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy presentation. Right now it looks like it's going to go to Upper Dolphin. Up 22-0. Upper Dolphin looking to win the f for the fourth time in a row in this series. Last Halifax win was in 2018, 41 to 28. Bingaman gonna keep it himself and tucks and gets down inside 30. Bingaman getting up slowly here. Take another look at this play. Pulls it right out of Snyder's belly and then fakes the pitch, keeps it himself. Down he goes, takes a hit on the helmet. So they're attending to him. That would not be good for the junior quarterback that played all of last year, over 1,200 yards passing, 15 touchdowns last year as a sophomore. Coach said last year he was a game manager. They had those senior running backs in the backfield, so they said they just wanted him to go out get the handoffs, not turn over the football. But this year, they asked him to be the man, be a game changer, take charge. A little out of his comfort zone. He takes a hit into the helmet when he slides down. Yeah, You'll see it's, it right there. Yep, takes the knee right there on our OSS Health injury report. OSS Health, high quality orthopedic care. So they attend to Aiden Bingaman. Coach expects a lot out of as all of his sophomore year last year under his belt and now here into the sixth game of his junior campaign. 
This is definitely an Upper Dolphin team that wants to repeat as Liberty champs. And this would get them out to a 3-0 start. With next week, they have James Buchanan, who should, they shouldn't have much trouble with. And then at Judiana, which is a big game. Judiana is a big game. And then Big Spring, and then maybe for the title, Week 10 against Lime Mountain. And here is Caleb Schneider with his second touchdown run of the night. 28-yard touchdown run, but there is a penalty marker down. It's your Air National Guard touchdown by Snyder, but I think it's coming back. I think so. I was holding in the backfield. Snyder not going to be too happy about his own line on that one. <laughs> oh, excuse me. No, that's a touchdown. So the penalty was on Halifax, the 28-yard touchdown run by Snyder. So two touchdowns by Snyder tonight. Here it is, your Pennsylvania Air National Guard touchdown, the 28-yard touchdown run by Snyder. Touchdown number seven for Schneider on the ground this season. 28 yards out, so Schneider with two touchdown runs and Tyler Erdley with two touchdown runs. Two-point conversion is good. And Upper Dolphin in complete control of this rivalry game. Doing it on the ground. Snyder in from 28 yards. The Trojans up 30 nothing. But talking to Coach Ken Smeltz of Upper Dolphin, he said the key was to run the ball. If we could establish the run, we'll be fine. Well, they established the run tonight, that's for sure. Snyder, 12 carries, 105 yards, two touchdowns. And Erdley was seven carries, 115 yards, and two touchdowns. That's a total of 316 yards on the ground from the wing tee. They've been running the football at will tonight and have a 30-0 lead over Halifax. Time for another Highmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Pennsylvania kickoff. As the Wildcats will have it being shut out after scoring the most points in the entire mid-pen Liberty Division through the first half of the season. So the Wildcats will have it first and 10 with no points on the board for them tonight on homecoming. Last week, Upper Dolphin scored 30 in their 30 to 6 win over Newport. They have 30 on the board again tonight. They put up 44 points in their win over Susquehanna two weeks ago, 44 27. They had a 43 point night when they beat Shenandoah Valley in week two. And they were shut out in week one at Williams Valley. 28 0 was the Trojans. Halifax, they're going to take a timeout. Nine thirty-six to go in the fourth quarter. Coming up next week, we will be in the Mid-Pen Colonial at Susquehanna Township. So we see the Blue Devils and Hannah. Should be a great game. Should be a real big game in the Mid-Pen Colonial. GA is four and one taking on a one and four Northern York team. So they should roll into Hannah next week, five and one. And Susquehanna Townships tonight is at Waynesboro. So they should most likely be four and two. And the only two losses that Coach Heaton's had this year, one point. They lost to Mechanicsburg, 14-13. They lost to Milton Hershey, 35 to 34. So that's a big game next week in the Mid-Pen Colonial. 
in week number seven of Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals. Halifax, Carroll going to keep it, pitches it, pitches it to Rank. Rank loses the football. It's on the turf. And I believe Upper Dolphin has the ball. Rank coughed it up. Upper Dolphin with a couple of sacks tonight. They had two, adding to their total of 18 sacks. Halifax will keep it. Take another look. Rank trying to fight for some extra yards and fumbled it right into two white jerseys, but was able to fight his way back to get the ball. You got to give Rank some credit there. Yeah, I mean, that's the second time I think he's ended up, you know, letting the ball cough up, but did recover both of them. 19 penalties, 185 combined yards between these two teams. And I guess that's what happens when you have a majority of your players never leave the field. Yeah. They're on offense, they're on defense, and they're on special teams when you have these small rosters. Halifax has 34 in their roster. Upper Dolphin has 46 on their roster. So sometimes you don't get a break, and that's where you get a lot of penalties in these smaller divisions, smaller classes. Incomplete pass, Redinger the intended target. Carroll's pass incomplete. Carroll threw it 21 times in the first half. Seven of 21 is for 62 yards, his first half numbers. But here's a guy that Coach Wall will have for the next two years in Tegan Carroll. So he's going to be a kid that's going to be a four-year starter at quarterback. Started last year as a freshman on a team that only had 21 kids on the roster last year and only had two or three seniors from a year ago from a one and nine Wildcat team from last year. Here is sack number three of the night for this upper Dolphin defense and now 19 sacks on the season for the Trojans. Just getting the backfield again like there was nowhere to go for Carroll from the beginning. Another sack for this Trojan defense. That's Montana Hooper, the 6'1", 240-pound senior, number 77, registering the third sack of the night and the 19th of the season for this Trojan defense. They're sack masters. There's big 77, Montana Hooper, 6'1", 240-pound senior. Halifax will punt the ball back to Upper Dolphin with a 30-0 lead for the Trojans. It was touched, has to fall on it at the 24-yard line. Carroll, 9 of 29 for 65 yards. The sophomore, Tegan Carroll. What are you doing tomorrow afternoon? How about the SEC on CBS? CBS 21 as Georgia and Auburn, Georgia. Defending champs, looking good again. Yeah. Can they repeat? They got a shot. Then on Sunday, Baltimore and the Cleveland Browns. The Ravens looking to bounce back from last week's loss against the Browns. That is Sunday at 1 o'clock on CBS 21. All starts at noon with the NFL today with James Brown and gang from New York. Upper Dolphin with a 30-0 lead. Have the football back. Running down the sideline into Halifax territory goes Aiden Roadcap. Roadcap has a 59-yard touchdown run this season, so he has the ability to break one. It's only his ninth carry of the season, and he has 134 yards on those previous eight carries, and there goes number eight for a long run into Halifax territory all the way down to the 45-yard line. So I would think get Roadcap more carries if he comes in with a 17-yard average, has a 59-yard touchdown run this season. I agree, and kind of, you know, you know. Seven minutes left, big lead. They're kind of putting different backs in the backfield. But Roadcap, big yard he picks up right there. Maybe we'll see him again. Yes. That is A.J. Santiago, the sophomore, with the carry number 14. So everything's in front of Coach Smeltz and Upper Dolphin. They definitely have something to play for, and that's what he talked about, the excitement. You're, you're in the... Uh, when you're in the hunt, everything counts. Every rep, every snap at practice, everything's got to be sharp. He's not going to be happy with all the penalties that his team committed tonight. That is for sure. Both teams com combined for 19 penalties, 185 yards. 
give to Snyder straight up the middle. Snyder with already two touchdowns tonight, and he's over 100 yards rushing and adds to that. So Tyler Erdley and Caleb Snyder both over 100 yards rushing, and the team is over 300 yards rushing is Upper Dolphin in this wing T attack. Snyder's been running tough the whole night. I've gotten into him a couple of times and just kind of carrying the backfield a little bit. As they're, well as they're closing in on the possibility of a 400 yard rushing game. They're close to about 350 yards rushing now with six minutes to go in this game and a 30 nothing lead. The wing T has been good. AJ Santiago, the quarterback, in now and handoff up to the 20 yard line. That is Rubellis again, the sophomore. Second and short after Carter's run. So just short of the bath fitter first down, and second and short, eight yard pickup. So second and two, 5.30 to go in this game. Upper Dolphins gonna make it three wins in a row and move to three and oh, which is important in the mid pen Liberty division. Trying to keep pace with Judiata. A.J. Santiago, the quarterback, with the run. The bath fitter first down on the keeper. Tonight, the mid-pen Liberty. Lime Mountain at Newport. Judiana at James Buchanan. And Camp Hill at Susquehanna out of conference game. So 30 nothing now, Upper Dolphin all on the ground. Four touchdowns tonight, all rushing touchdowns. Snyder with two, Erdley with two touchdowns. Closing in on maybe a 400-yard rushing night for this Trojans offense, the wing team. A.J. going to keep it, looking to throw. Now rolling to his right, penalty marker is down. Fires to the end zone and incomplete. A.J. Santiago bought as much time as he possibly could, was looking for road cap who dropped the football, but there's a penalty marker in the backfield. Penalty number 20 is coming up next here from Kurt Miller. You can kind of see, I think the penalty marker is right. Yeah, the crowd kind of enhanced that one, but as you can see, chop block. So a chop block for the 20th penalty of the night between penalty these two teams. Chop block. And that'll move Upper Dolphin back. So you're going to be really happy, Coach Smeltz is, when he breaks down the film and talks to the team on Monday about the way his team played as far as execution on the ground, establishing the run. Um, but the penalties, some of the mental mistakes, the three pass interference calls, some of the other 15-yard uh, infractions, those are going to be the things that Coach Smeltz is going to talk about with his team on Monday. Upper Dolphin 379 yards on the ground. So getting closer to that 400 mark. Straight ahead inside run on that wing tee. In, wing tee is interesting. You can do so many things with it. Go from the inside to the outside on your running game. That was the sophomore Carter. Belvis and the carry. So over 380 yards rushing the football and all four touchdowns coming on the ground tonight. Both Tyler Erdley and Caleb Snyder over 100 yards rushing and two touchdowns apiece. But the Dolphin has gone for two all night long. That's why we have the, the 30 score on the board. Around the right side. And that is Diefenbach. Puts his shoulder pads down and goes forward. Holding. Another penalty. Offense. Ten yard penalty. Spotted a foul. Still second down. Penalty number 21 on the night between these two teams. Another one on Upper Dolphin. Don't forget, we're going to have our. Anderson Chimney sweeps catch of the game, as well as our Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy presentation, all coming up. Too bad we didn't have the Anderson Chimney's run of the game. There was plenty of those tonight. Here's another good run. 
Going to the end zone is Ben Angle for the touchdown for Upper Dolphin. So the fifth rushing touchdown of the night, Ben Angle gets the run. Ben Angle, the senior, gets the touchdown, and there he goes in for the score. Touchdown number five on the night. Here's your Air National Guard touchdown. Ben Angle. His upper dolphin is getting close to that 400-yard rushing night with five rushing touchdowns. And they'll go for two, up 36-0. 3.06 to go in the fourth. There's a penalty marker down on the two-point conversion try. As they gave it right back to Angle to see if he could get the two. Upper Dolphin, 11 penalties, 110 yards on the night. Holding offense. And add to that. Decline. So penalty number 12. So two-point conversion, no good, but... Upper Dolphin has their fifth rushing touchdown of the game. Brent Angle. Ben Angle in the end zone, and it's 36-0, Upper Dolphin. Four hundred and twelve yards on the ground tonight for Upper Dolphin in their wing T attack and five rushing touchdowns. They lead it thirty six nothing with three oh six to go. Here in our Wellspan Sports Medicine's Friday Night Rivals week number six, the final Friday finally in September. It'll be in October next week and it'll already be week seven of the high school football season. High mark Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Pennsylvania kickoff. Ben Angle had that last rushing touchdown for the Trojans. 412 yards they put on the ground running the ball tonight. Halifax looking for something. On the return there was offered the sophomore, 6'3", 170-pound sophomore. And let's have our catch of the night. Halifax didn't score any points, but they have our catch of the night. Tegan Carroll throws a beautiful ball. What a catch by Mason Enders, the senior for Halifax. That is our Anderson Chimney Sweeps catch of the night. Anderson Chimney Sweeps, like a good receiver, Anderson Chimney Sweeps is here. South Central PA's chimney and venting system experts. The catch of the night for Mason Enders of Halifax. They are getting shut out here tonight. Halifax has managed to score at least 14 points in every game. Like I said, coming in, averaging 34 points a game, and they get shut out here tonight. They scored 169 points in the first five games of the season, did the Wildcats, but zero here tonight. Isaac Miller still running hard up to the 45-yard line on that first down run. So Upper Dolphin, who started the season one and two, they lost to Williams Valley, they got shut out in week one, then beat Shenandoah Valley, and then lost to Camp Hill 42-20. And now they've gone on a three-game win streak over Susquehanna, Newport, and tonight here against Halifax. Picks up a yard, does Carroll, and he has a first down. Bath fitter first down run by Tegan Carroll.
championship trophy presentation coming up. Our Wellspan Sports Medicine Friday Night Rivals championship trophy with Keon down on the field with Upper Dolphin. Incomplete by Carroll on that pass. So Upper Dolphins running backs starring tonight with Tyler Erdley over 100 yards and two touchdowns. Caleb Schneider over 100 yards and two scores. Schneider 13 carries 122 yards. Erdley seven carries 115 yards. And there is an interception, I think. So picked off. The interception there by Upper Dolphin coming up and making the pick is Erdley. His first interception and the fourth for this Upper Dolphin Trojan defense. So they've had an interception and a bunch of sacks tonight. Three sacks and an interception. 19 sacks on the season. Now their fourth interception. Tyler Erdley, who has a big night run of the football, 13 carries, 100 and, or uh, seven carries, 115 yards, two touchdowns. And Snyder, 13 carries, 122 yards. So Upper Dolphin will go to four and two. They will take on James Buchanan next week. Halifax will fall to three and three on the season. And they'll be at Lime Mountain next week, and then Susquehanna, and then Newport and Trinity. So a tough road to follow for the Wildcats, who started three and two. Run straight up the middle, might go for another long run, and indeed he does. That is Aiden Roadcap, the kid that's averaging about 17 yards a carry, has a huge run on the final play of the game. Upper Dolphin dominant tonight, over 400 yards rushing. And they win it 36 nothing for their third straight win. And more importantly, they are 3 0 in mid pen Liberty Division play, the title that they won a year ago. So it's Upper Dolphin 36, Halifax nothing. We'll have the championship trophy presentation when we come back from Halifax. Upper Dolphin has won their third game in a row now, 4-2 and 3-0 and and oh in the Mid-Pen Liberty Division. A final tonight, 36-0 over Halifax. Let's head down on the field for our Wellspan Sports Medicine's trophy presentation with Keon. Take it away, Keon. Thank you, Phil. Coach, you know you guys are on the road. You know you host a shutout. What things can you just say about your team and how you guys have played tonight? Hey, we, we just persevered. We kept on fighting. I'm real proud of the team. Um, we just played Trojan football the second half. Yes, 
sir. That's all that matters. And week six, Friday Night Rivals. Yeah. Upper Dolphin, yeah. Trojan. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right, there's our championship trophy presentation, and it goes to Upper Dolphin getting the win here tonight. They go to 4-2 and two on the season, 36-0. They do it on the ground, over 400 yards rushing, five rushing touchdowns. Coming up next week, it'll be week number seven, and we'll be in the Mid-Pen Colonial. GA Blue Devils and uh, Susquehanna Township will be at Anna. Should be a good one against two very good teams. That game will mean a lot in the Mid-Pen Colonial. We're getting closer to the playoffs. It's week seven. That is next week. We'll see you for that. Don't miss it. CBS 21 would like to take a moment to thank Wellspan Sports Medicine, who made these games possible for the viewers at home. We'd like to thank them for supporting these fine athletes this year. We'd also like to thank everyone else that makes Friday Night Rivals happen each and every week. Wellspan Sports Medicine, Highmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Schellenberger Januzzi Wolf LLP, Bath Fitter, Kitchen Saver, West Shore Home, Pennsylvania Air National Guard, Able Sun Roofing, Members One Federal Credit Union, Pennsylvania Army National Guard, OSS Health, Giant Foods, Anderson Chimney Sweeps, and Barber Styling Institute, and of course, Upper Dolphin and Halifax, their athletic directors, coaches, administrators, and athletes. To watch this game again, anytime, anywhere, go to CBS21.com. Friday Night Rivals is a production of the Sports Fever Television Network. Thanks to Matt Pakovich on stats and my partner, Keon Claiborne, and the entire Friday Night Rivals production crew. I'm Phil Shader saying good night and see you next week for another edition of Friday Night Rivals, our final tonight, Upper Dolphin 36, Halifax 0.